G'day folks, welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about Jacob's ladder. In the book of Genesis, chapter 28, the Bible tells us that Jacob had a dream of God. And in this dream, he saw a ladder or a staircase to heaven and God was at the top of the staircase and angels were ascending and descending upon this ladder. But what did this dream mean and what did the ladder or staircase represent? Well, let's go through the passage in Genesis chapter 28, beginning at verse 10. Genesis chapter 28, beginning at verse 10. Then Jacob went out from Beersheba, and he went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. He took one of the stones of that place and put it under his head, and he lay in that place to sleep. Now, at this point in the story, Jacob has left his father's house. He's been sent by his father to go and get a bride and to bring that bride back to his father's house. And he's used this as an opportunity to escape from Esau's wrath. Now, some people see an allusion here to Christ who leaves heaven, comes to earth to get a bride and to bring that bride back to his father's house. House. I think that's quite possible, uh, but we can't be dogmatic about that. Let's keep reading. He dreamed and saw a ladder set up on the earth with the top of it reaching to heaven. The angels of God were ascending and descending upon it. Now, some translations say ladder and other translations say staircase or stairway. But most Bible commentators make a connection between Jacob's ladder or staircase and the ancient ziggurats found in the Mesopotamian world. It was believed at that time that the ziggurats, which had a staircase that went from the bottom to the top, the ziggurats were the place where you could meet with God. It was the meeting place of heaven and earth. And uh, Jacob, in his dream, when he wakes up from the dream, he says, this is surely uh, the house of God, the gateway to heaven. So clearly Jacob saw something that resembled uh, what he would have been very familiar with, and that is the ancient um, uh, ziggurat staircases. The IVP background commentary says this, The ladder or stairway that Jacob sees in his dream is the passageway between heaven and earth. The comparable word in Akkadian is used in Mesopotamian mythology to describe what the messenger of the gods uses when he wants to pass from one realm to the other. It is this mythological stairway that the Babylonians sought to represent in the architecture of the ziggurat. The archaeological study Bible says the stairway was probably not a ladder with rungs, but was more likely similar to the steps mounting the sloping side of a ziggurat. Now, it's worth noting that the Garden of Eden was most likely on a mountaintop because it had a river flowing from it and four major rivers separated from this river and two of them were the Tigris and the Euphrates. So clearly, Eden was up high and really these ziggurats were man's attempt to reach God after being cast out of the Garden of Eden. It's interesting to note also that the Tower of Babel was another attempt by man to reach God. And God, of course, came down and dispersed them by giving them different languages so that they couldn't communicate. See, the ziggurats and the Tower of Babel represent man's attempt to reach God. God. And it's interesting to note that immediately after the story of the Tower of Babel, we are introduced to Abraham and God begins his plan of redemption through Abraham and ultimately through Jesus Christ. But here in this dream, uh, Jacob is shown a stairway to heaven and he's being shown the true way in which man uh, can be reunited with God and through which man can have fellowship with God once again. Let's keep reading Genesis chapter 28 and we're at verse 13. The Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie to you will I give it and to your descendants. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and in your descendants, 
all the families of the earth will be blessed. I want you to notice here that the blessings of Abraham were not intended to be just for a select chosen group of people. No, the blessings of Abraham were meant to be for the entire world. It's interesting to note that, again, as I've already mentioned, right after the story of the Tower of Babel, where the, the peoples are dispersed across the world, God introduces us to Abraham. And it is through Abraham and his seed that the nations of the world, the whole world, will be blessed. Uh, salvation and the blessings of Abraham is not just something for a select group of people, but is something that is offered to the whole world. Let's keep reading. Verse 15, remember, I am with you and I will protect you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. This promise is very similar to the promise that Jesus gave to his disciples who were really continuing on the mission of Abraham by bringing the blessings of Abraham to the entire world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus promises to be with them even unto the end. Let's keep reading here. Jacob awoke out of his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So when Jacob woke up from this dream, he made a clear connection between this staircase to heaven and the house of God. He believed that the place where he was was the house of God and the gateway to heaven. But there was no temple there. And there never was a temple built there, at least not a temple that was approved of by God. But Jesus, he says something very interesting in the Gospel of John. I want you to turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 43, and it says this, The next day Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law, as well as the prophets, wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said concerning him, Here is an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Now, this is a clear reference to Jacob. Jacob was a deceiver. Jacob was someone who had guile, but his name was changed to Israel. And here Jesus is calling Nathanael a true Israelite, and he's saying that he is ready to receive the blessings of Jacob. He is a true Israelite. Let's keep reading. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Here in this passage, Jesus is claiming to be the staircase or, or the ladder that was in Jacob's dream. Jesus is claiming to be the one that connects heaven and earth. Jesus is claiming to be the one upon whom the angels ascend and descend. He is claiming to be Jacob's ladder. And it is through him that we have access to God. And it is through him that we have access to the blessing of of Abraham. Jesus said in John 4 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by being made a curse for us. As it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. It is through the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that we have access to God. Jesus is our stairway to heaven. It is through Jesus that we receive the blessings 
of Abraham. It is not through our own works, our own merits. God rejects that. Just as God rejected the Tower of Babel and just as God rejected all of man's attempts to reach him, so too does God reject us trying to reach God by our own works. We are only able to reach God through Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is Jacob's ladder and Jesus Christ is our stairway and access to heaven. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell notification button. I'll see you in the comment section and you'll see me in my next video.